Well, this, this begins quite a study in the book of Revelation. Um, but before we start the book of Revelation, uh, there are some things that I want to uh, cover as an introduction. Some important things, of course. And uh, I want to start with uh, the book of Luke, chapter 19, verse 41. Yeshua is talking and he says, uh, as he approached Jerusalem, he saw the city and he wept over it. Why? Because Israel did not recognize their Messiah. And he said, if you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. This is where the partial blindness of the Jews began. Take a look at Romans chapter 11, verse 25, where it says that Israel is blinded in part until the fullness of the Gentiles comes in. That would be until the Harpazo after the Harpazo, Israel, Israel's eyes will be opened. And we'll see that uh, more pointedly uh, as we get into the book of Revelation. Verse 43 says, The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground, you and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of Yahweh's coming to you. Now, what he's talking about there, where they'll be hemmed in on every side, etc., um, that occurred 38 years after he spoke those words. But he said that it would happen because you did not recognize the time of Yahweh's coming to you. He... Um, Held, he's holding them accountable to know the prophecy in Daniel. And that's where we're going next, because the book of Revelation, um, and by the way, I can always tell when someone hasn't studied the book of Revelation, because they always call it the book of Revelations. <laughs> it's not a bunch of Revelations. <clears throat> it's singular. It's the book of Revelation. It's the revelation, or better understood would be to say that it's the revealing or the unveiling of the Messiah at the second coming. So uh, mark that in your file cabinet up here. It's the book of Revelation. So Yeshua is um, holding them accountable. They should have known this prophecy in the book of Daniel. And that is in Daniel chapter 9, beginning with verse 24. And it runs down to uh, the uh, end of the chapter. Verse 27, there's just four verses, but these four verses are very important for you to understand, they outline uh, what's commonly referred to as the 70 weeks of Daniel. And in Revelation, we see the 70th, the final week of Daniel. Now, um, one week represents, in this case, seven years. And it opens up in verse 24, it says, Seventy sevens are decreed for your people and your holy city. Seventy sevens. Um, are decreed. This is not for the called out ones. Not for the church. This is only for Jerusalem and Israel. Seventy-sevens are decreed for your people, Israel, 
and your holy city, Jerusalem. And um, what follows gives you the scope of the whole prophecy. 77s are decreed for your people and your holy city, for Israel and Jerusalem. Here's the scope of the whole thing. To finish transgression, to put an end to sin, to atone for wickedness, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and the prophet, and to anoint the most holy place. If your Bible reads differently than that, I'm giving you the corrections according to the original language that was originally penned. By the Holy Spirit. Now, verse 25, it says, No one understand this from the issuing of the decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until the anointed one, the ruler, comes. There will be seven sevens and sixty two sevens. It will be built with streets and a trench, but in times of trouble. Note, Verse 25 is um, talking about the issuing of a decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem. Not the temple. Jerusalem. And it refers to its streets and a trench being, be, being rebuilt. <clears throat> and it's saying that from the issuing of that decree... To do this until the Messiah comes. There will be seven sevens and sixty two sevens. In other words, sixty nine sevens or sixty nine weeks of years. It's broken up like that um, seven sevens and sixty two sevens. Because it took seven years um, to build, and then another 62 years till the first coming. That's a total of 69 weeks of years. And uh, the biblical calendar was 360 days per year, uh, not 365 like we have today. So that is a total of 173,880 days. Now the decree to rebuild the temple began on March 14th, 445 BC. Look at Nehemiah chapter 2 for that. The first coming of the Messiah was on April 6th, 32 AD. That's Palm Sunday. You can look at Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Look at Matthew chapter 21, verse 5. Look at Luke chapter 19, uh, verse 28. Now, <laughs> that prophecy, the second coming, occurred precisely to the very day from the issuing of the decree um, March 14th, 445 B.C., until the first coming of the Messiah on April 6, 32 A.D., was exactly 173,880 days. The prophecies of the Bible are astoundingly accurate. So, um, that was um, verse 25. Now, we look at verse 26. It says, after the 62 sevens, in other words, after the 69 sevens, because it said 7 and 62, after the 62, or after the full 69 weeks of years, uh, the anointed one will be, the original Hebrew there is karat, cut off, executed, or as we know, he was crucified. Now here, that's prophesied. And he will have nothing. The people of the ruler who will come 
will destroy the city and the sanctuary. Uh, the city and the sanctuary was destroyed by Rome, Roman soldiers. Those are the people of the ruler who will come. The ruler who will come is referring to the Antichrist seen in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. Uh, then it says, The end will come like a flood. War will continue until the end, and desolations have been decreed. Now finally, in verse 27, it says, He will confirm. This is referring to the Antichrist that we see in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. Um just referred to in the sentence before as the ruler who will come. He will confirm. Now, the original Hebrew here says that he will enforce or he will strengthen. He doesn't create a covenant. He enforces one that's already in existence or he strengthens it. He will enforce and strengthen a covenant with many for one seven, meaning for seven years. In the middle of the seven, three and a half years in, he will put an end to sacrifice and offering. That means that the temple, which is not in existence right now in present day history, has to be rebuilt in order for the Antichrist to um, put an end to sacrifice and offering, they have to be sacrificing and offering, and that's done through the temple. So the temple will be rebuilt before the middle of the week, where the Antichrist puts an end to sacrifice and offering. And on a wing of the temple, he will set up an abomination that causes desolation until the end that is decreed is poured out on him. That right there, verse 27, is referring to the 70th week. Um, verses 25 and 26 um, are pointing out the 7 and the 62 weeks of years, 69 weeks of years. And then verse 27 points at the 70th week. Now, between verses 26 and 27, there's a gap. Um, and interestingly enough, there are 24 such gaps in the Bible. And there are 24 thrones in heaven, which we'll see when we get into the book of Revelation. But the point here is, verses 25 and 26 um, talks about the timing and the prophecy for the first coming of the Messiah and does so accurately right down to the day. And then there's a gap uh, of time. We don't know how big that gap of time is. And verse 27 begins the 70th week of Daniel. Um, where the Antichrist is revealed and uh, becomes a power player in the world. Right now, uh, at the time of me making this video, we are in that gap. And um, if we go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, um, we'll see when the 70th week begins, when this gap that we are in comes to an end. Um, chapter 2 of 2 Thessalonians, um, verse 6, it's talking about the Antichrist. Uh, it says, now you know what is holding the Antichrist back so that he may be revealed at the proper time for the secret power of lawlessness is already at work but the one who now holds that back the one who now holds that back is the Holy Spirit 
will continue to do so until he is taken out of the way, until the Holy Spirit is taken. And I have a teaching um, on this YouTube channel, youtube.com slash watch Allen, A-L-A-N, um, about Second Thessalonians. There might be a couple of them, uh, but you'll see where this word, I expound on this, and the, the word in the original Greek here is genomahi, which um, the word taken in my NIV means thundered, awakened, vanished, altered, assembled, it has to do with a marriage. To me, that's the harpazo, the rapture commonly known as, the proper word is harpazo, and uh, the Holy Spirit is taken when the called out ones are taken at the harpazo. Um, verse 8, and then the lawless one, the uh, we commonly refer to as the Antichrist, will be revealed. So, uh, the harpazo happens and then the Antichrist is revealed. And uh, then the 70th week of Daniel begins. And that's what we're going to be looking at in the book of Revelation. Um, the book of Revelation was written by John. John wrote the book of John, one of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He also wrote uh, 1 John and 2 John, two small books, a little bit in front of Revelation. And he wrote the book of Revelation. Now, when we see John in the Gospels, he's a young boy, maybe 18 years old. Um, now, at the writing of Revelation, he's more like 80 years old. Um, they tried to kill him. That is, they tried to boil him in oil, but he would not boil. Uh, this is according to some historical records. Um, probably records by a man known as Josephus. At any rate, they exiled him to an island called Patmos, which is uh, 10 miles long, 6 miles wide. It's off the coast of Turkey. And while he was there, he wrote the book of Revelation. There are 404 verses in the book of Revelation. 278 of them refer to the Old Testament. A lot of people say the book of Revelation is hard to understand. I totally disagree. I think it's very easy to understand. But you have to know the Old Testament in order to understand the book of Revelation. The, um, it's also known as the Apocalypse. It really means the unveiling of Yahshua HaMashiach, of Yeshua, the Messiah. And um, I don't know, there might be actually 404 verses. There might be over 800 references to the Old Testament. At any rate, the point is, um, you have to know the Old Testament in order to understand this book. Um, and I'm going to stop there. And uh, next week, we'll start reading the book of Revelation. And let me just point this out, that the book of Revelation is, is the most avoided book in the history of the church, or the churches. And when I'm there, when I say church, I mean the churches, religion. I'm not talking about the called out ones. Um, the, you know, if you talk to a Catholic priest, he'll tell you you shouldn't read this book. It's not for us to understand. And yet, it's the only book in the Bible that promises a special blessing to those who read it or hear it read. Look at Revelation chapter 1, verse 3. It says, Blessed is the one who reads the words of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear it and take to heart 
what is written in it. So, a special blessing is promised to those who read this book or hear it read. That's, that's not true about any other book in the Bible. This um, is a very important book for you to study. And we'll get into it next week. Shalom.